Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. People remember how you start and how you finish, how you come and how you go. And through the years, I've observed that more people quit near the end than any other time. I don't know why that is, but so many start well, stay well for a while, and then falter near the finish line. And I think Acts 28, verse number 31, is one of the greatest verses in the Bible to encourage us to finish strong for the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the last verse of Acts. The last verse of our study, Acts 28, 31, says Paul is preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. There are so many things I want to show you from this verse today. One thing I think is fascinating is that there is no conclusion. There is no benediction. Did you notice that in the book of Acts? Unlike the other New Testament books, there's no amen. There's no signing off. Why is that? Because this was just the commencement of 2,000 plus years of of church history, but the church is still advancing. The gospel is still moving to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is reminding us that he's continuing to work. Oh, praise God for this. We give a lot of attention to the first chapter of Acts. I think we need to give a little more attention to the last chapter of the book of Acts uh, because there is no summation, no conclusion, no amen, no farewell. The last chapter is still being written right now in the annals of history in heaven. Uh, the Lord, the great record keeper. And what should we be doing? The same thing Paul was doing. Preaching the kingdom of God. Teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. You just keep doing what God has given you to do. You just keep being the Christian witness God has left you here to be. But notice not only what he did, notice how he did it. The Bible says, with all confidence. You know, it's easy to begin with confidence. Think about your youth and when you're a novice starting out, you got all the answers, right? We, we begin with all confidence. But Paul is ending with all confidence. And in his own words, Philippians 3, verse 3, it's not confidence in the flesh. No, he's put that aside. It's confidence in Christ. Why would he have such confidence? Well, the next phrase, the last phrase of the book answers the question, no man forbidding him. Now this, this phrase literally is a word that was used in Paul's day, and the word was this word, unhindered. Uh, no man forbidding literally means unhindered, no shackles. Now get this picture. Paul's in chains. Paul's in a, in a house. Paul is in bondage. Some would think he's hindered. Oh, but the word of God is not bound. No, there is no hindrance to God. There is no hindrance to the gospel. There is no hindrance to the work of the Holy Spirit in this world. If that's being held back, it's, it's our fault. You can't blame the world and the flesh and the devil and all the enemies for that uh, because no man can stop what God is doing. You know what we need? We need a revival of confidence in Christ. Not arrogance. I'm not talking about pride. I'm talking about confidence that is built on the certainty of who our God is and what he's doing and where we're going. Paul finished with that confidence. I want to finish with that confidence. You know, we're in Acts 28. It's the last chapter of Acts. But actually, Paul's last chapter is 2 Timothy 4. You ought to compare this verse to his last words written in 2 Timothy 4 where he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That sounds like confidence to me. And indeed, it is. And I want to say to you, every one of us ought to make up our mind. We're going to press to the finish line. We're going to finish strong. We're not coasting into heaven on fumes. Uh, brother, I, I'd like to cross the threshold 
uh, with the, the pedal to the metal. <laughs> I want to finish pushing forward for the Lord with all confidence, no man forbidding me. Nobody stopping. They may push back, but they can't stop. No, the story goes on until Christ's call comes for us. I don't know when that will be. You know, it's interesting, isn't it, that there is no record in Acts of Paul's death. We don't get the details of his martyrdom, how it all worked out. Do you know why? Because that's not the emphasis. The emphasis is not Paul, it's Christ. The emphasis is not on his death. It's on that which continues beyond his death. It's not on what man can do. It's on what God is doing. And that ought to put fresh confidence in every one of us. Philippians, you know, is my favorite book of the Bible. I quote it often, this book of Christian joy. And may the Lord give you fresh joy today. But in Philippians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul said this in verse number 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day of Jesus Christ, not just to the day of your death. Uh, The work of God goes on. The, the labor of Paul continues to reap great dividends and rewards and fruit. That's why we don't get a rewards to the judgment seat of Christ because uh, those rewards are still being collected at this moment. It's going on until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, do you remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20, when he gave this great commission, when he set all this in motion with the first disciples? He said he'd be with us and work even until the end of the world. Amen. So not just in your lifetime, not just in your context, not just in ways you can see and understand, not just in circumstances that you like. No, in every circumstance, in every place, God is working until the end of the world, until the day of Jesus Christ, until the end. And that ought to put in every one of us this all confidence because the Lord and his work, the Lord's promises and the Lord's power are unhindered. I do not know what is yet to be written in God's record of church history. I don't. But I do know how it ends. Uh, The last chapter is not Acts 28. The last chapter is Revelation 22. And if you want to continue your study, you ought to go over to the end of your Bible today and read Revelation 22 and just rejoice and rest in this. Uh, We're on the winning side. Soon we're all going to see Jesus face to face. The adventure continues. In fact, when we see Jesus, when the Lord comes for us and calls us to be with him, that's not the end of it either. I would argue the greatest adventure of all is going to be eternity. When we get in the presence of our infinite, perfect God, oh, what a glorious day that's going to be. And until that day, by God's grace and for God's glory, I want to keep preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him. Let's make our prayer today that Acts 28, 31 will be the lasting legacy, uh, the, the true testimony of our life and labor. Would you join me in that prayer? Father, we've had such a marvelous time in the Word. Thank you for using the truth of Scripture, the example of these first believers and the work of the Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith. And now would you put in us fresh confidence, fresh courage, Uh, fresh certainty today to move forward, knowing that you are not bound and your work is not hindered by what Satan and all the hounds of hell or any man can do. Lord, may we press on to the final amen, to the trumpet sounds. Uh, May we find our place and do our part as the adventure continues in this world. And Lord, we're looking forward to seeing you. We love your appearing. We say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And help us to be faithful to you and true until the end. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment. And we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists, to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. 
Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.